This is my entry for Yakma Shua Second Curse Gongmang Circus. I'm rocking up to this competition a little unprepared, so my presentation might be rough around the edges. But for the language itself, that's on purpose, since that's pretty typical of naturally occurring silicates. Now imagine a world. People have owned bedrocks for most of history. A sport develops around it, in which stoners let their stones dip it out. People gamble on it, and all think gets a kind of sleazy reputation. This sport is called rock fighting. The joke, naturally, is that rock rhymes with penis. Due to concerns about the cruel treatment of rocks, and because gambling falls out of fashion, rock fighting becomes outlawed. But the demand does not disappear, oh no. Then rocks today remains a popular spectator sport, and people pay handsomely to attend these events. So, a comfort method of communication develops with its owners, so that they know where and when to rock up for some gravelly silicate on silicate action. This language, known as the rock fighting language, is what the rest of this video will be about. As a way to keep rock fighting exclusive, stoners want to make it difficult for outsiders to use the language. And what better way than to require the speaker to stone in order to st -he. That's why rock fighting doesn't have a phonology, instead, it has a stonology. The stoneme is defined by two things material of articulation and manner of articulation. There are nine chromatic materials of articulation. These are jasper, eviolite, citrine, peridot, jade, turquoise, lapis lazuli, amethyst, and rhodonite. The main distinction is made using their color, so materials of similar use can be substituted from one another. But these nine materials are the canonical ones with which to speak rock fighting. There is also one more non-chromatic material, which traditionally is obsidian. The language has four manners of articulation. The silica manual stop, the silica manual trill, the silica manual flap, and the silica manual fricative. To keep it simple, I'll call them the squeeze, the rub, the bat, and the present. One important note, while you could theoretically communicate using silly cats, this is usually avoided, because contrary to popular belief, silly cats are not actually rocks. It used to be tradition for a owner to only carry a maximum of six stones at a time, which is not enough to form every stoning. Luckily, diff stones combine into the color that's equally similar to both. To form a diff stone, you place two stones on top of one another. For instance, placing a piece of jade on a piece of lapis lazuli is interpreted as turquoise. If there isn't a middle color, the top stone acts as the tiebreaker. If you stack lapis lazuli and jasper, it's unclear whether the result should be amethyst or rhodonite. So if jasper is at the top, the material becomes rhodonite, and if lapis lazuli is at the top, it becomes amethyst. To form obsidian, colors of nearly opposite hues can be used. For example, a jade jasper diff stone, or a jade rhone knight diff stone. A modern addition to the language are trift stones. Only the bat and rub manners of articulation are used, as squeezing or presenting a large stack of stones is quoted as being rocky by one native speaker. Quarter of stones and onward are considered dialectal. Besides, putting diff stone inside your trift stones causes an issue. It's unclear exactly which two stones would combine to form one of a different color. So instead, some variance in material of articulation is allowed. For example, the canonical way to stun answer the question particle is to stack turquoise, peridot, and amethyst and rub them. However, you could also use a stack of lapis lazuli, citrine, and another lapis lazuli for this, since each material of articulation is only one place removed from the canonical material. The existence of polyp stones allows stoners to use idiolects based on their identity, emotions, and which stones they like the most. In order to say that you know rock fighting, you must understand polyp stones and how they affect the meaning of words. Or rather, how they don't. Stonemes can also become lengthened. This is pretty straightforward, you just do the thing for a longer amount of time. There is actually one more stoneme that is entirely different from the rest, and it has some lore to go along with it. Back in the day, some stoners would toss their stones into the rock fighting ring, which often caused them to crack or chip. If geological records are accurate, these people were usually rich and wanted to show off that they could afford to treat their stones poorly. People weren't impressed, however, and the practice quickly became taboo. You could gently toss up a stone in your hand or mimic the movement with an empty hand to refer to the action indirectly. This euphemism, which far predates the rock fighting language, quickly became synonymous with negativity. It became incorporated into the language as the main way of marking negation. There's a joke here that most people probably won't understand, but the moral of the story is this. People should have rights. <laughs> ah, damn it, hold on. Like this. And there... Alright, that's better. Anyway, as I was saying, human rights are good, and trying to take them away is bad. Typical non-controversial stuff we can all agree on. Before anyone has time to prove me wrong, let's look at the grammar. Let's start with a general overview. 
Word order can be changed for emphasis, but is usually subject, object, verb. The copula can often be dropped, since the subject complement is formed by juxtaposition. For example, that man is my brother, he comes, that man my brother. Most parts of speech can be regularly derived from a lemma or even an entire phrase. Exceptions include pronouns, prepositions, and determiners. There are no articles or any grammatical distinction between definite and indefinite. Language is mostly head final, but adverbs go after the head rather than before. And lastly, a language uses active stative morphosyntactic alignment. Nouns end with a patting obsidian suffix. Exceptions mainly include words that only make sense as nouns, such as pronouns and abstract concepts. Nouns also take the following case marking suffixes. The active case is formed by presenting citrine. The stative case is formed by presenting amethyst. The reflexive case is formed by presenting citrine and then amethyst. The genitive case is formed by lengthening the preceding stoneme and then squeezing obsidian. The noun is made plural by lengthening the final stoneme of the root just before you pad your obsidian. Most nouns are an exception and always use the singular form. If the final stoning of the root is already long, it becomes overlong. Pronouns have an extra case, the reciprocal. It's formed in the same way as the reflexive, but all reciprocal forms squeeze the preceding stone, while all reflexive forms rub it. I'll move through these tables quickly since the pronouns aren't very cursed, but you can pause if you want to study them. Adjectives end with a squeezing obsidian suffix. For the comparative, you lengthen the squeezing of your obsidian. For the superlative, you squeeze obsidian and then pat it. Verbs end with a presenting obsidian suffix. Exceptions include the copula and copula-like verbs. Rock fighting has past, present, and future tense, and imperfective and perfective aspect. Now, this table I'm showing you here is kind of cursed, because this analysis of rock fighting's tense and aspect system is dumb as a brick, but it's the intended one. Just look at how regular everything is. The past is formed by patting turquoise and rubbing peridot. The future is formed by patting peridot and then rubbing it. And the imperfective is formed by lengthening the last stoneme, which in the case of the present tense, is just the verbalizer. Why is this so dumb? Well, let me show you some example phrases. The imperfective past should actually be called the present perfect progressive. It's neither past tense nor imperfective. And the perfective past is actually just the past symbol. The imperfective present is imperfective, but, uh, so is the perfective present. Well, actually, the imperfective is just progressive, so let's fix that. The imperfective future label makes sense, but we can call it the future simple. The perfective future label is also good, but let's call it the future perfect. So, a more accurate table would look like this. These are the real tenses and aspects. Things have been shaken up pretty significantly, but... You might say that this isn't actually all that bad, and I do see your point. I'll bring back the conjugations which I've been strategically hiding from you. So now, the conjugation rules don't make any sense anymore. Good luck with that. I'll just be going back to the first table and putting the horrors I just showed you out of mind. After all, we all know that if you can't see something, it doesn't exist. Using particles to mark modality is a recent addition to the language and has replaced a number of old language constructs. Model particles leave the verb to which they're attached. Here are the modalities in rock fighting. Rub in a stack of turquoise, peridot, and amethyst marks a question. Rub in a stack of jade, lapis lazuli, and heliolite marks a hypothetical event. Rub in a stack of lapis lazuli, jasper, and peridot marks a condition. Rub in a stack of lapis lazuli, citrine, and jasper marks a command. Rub in a stack of rhodonite, heliolite, and jade marks an event that is desirable or should follow from a previous statement. Rub in a stack of jasper, jade, and lapis lazuli marks an event that is undesirable or should not follow logically from a previous statement. This is the rocktography part. It's also the a posteriori part. And it's still the rock part as well, but that's the entire video. Most importantly though, it's the part where I blatantly rip off an existing writing system to make it worse in every way. I'm talking about everyone's favorite silicate-based writing system. Okay, let's see... Oh, um, without further ado, I present to you the Roam writing system. Flesh on silicate communication by itself worked for a while, but st owners eventually realized that they needed a way to write things down as well. They wanted the writing system to be similarly exclusive to st owners, 
So, I jumped to the obvious solution of encoding messages by carving them into silicates. And rather than inventing a writing system specifically for rock fighting, they modified an existing one that suited their needs decently well. Roam was usually carved into throwaway carrier stones, rather than into one's prized collection of fighting stones, but people don't like mutilating silicates at all nowadays. Luckily, it can also be carved into other materials, without affecting the meaning of the message. The Oum writing system has four achmi, which lines up very well with rock fighting's need to encode for four different manners of articulation. But each achmi only has five members, so Rome expands this number to nine for its nine chromatic materials of articulation. After all, having to spend more time writing means you have the superior writing system. The fourth letter, Ord, is the inspiration for the obsidian letters, which are special for some reason. Each manner has a different amount of lines in the diamond. One for patting, two for presenting, three for rubbing, and four for squeezing. You might be wondering why the line count for obsidian is out of order, but that's something I won't explain later. Additionally, the letter Ilian is used for negation. There is also the letter Eva, which is used to connect stones that are in a stack, so that a stack can't be confused for consisting of three distinct stonemes. This does mean that all the pull of stone weirdness carries over into Rome, and now you don't even have colors to help you make sense of it anymore. As for the lexicon, the stone names chosen for words are not entirely arbitrary. For example, the word for B is rubbing citrine and obsidian because it's a fuzzy yellow and black creature, and then presenting turquoise because it can fly. But these are more like hints that can help you remember a word you already kind of know, and a real learning aid, and most combinations aren't downright misleading at first glance. I'm not going to bore you by having you sit through a dictionary recital, so I'll link the word list in the description. But there's one particular entry that's important for the upcoming translation. Since rock fighting has no such phrase as, of course, I have to choose a different phrase. I've elected to use the idiom, stone is solid, which means that something is obvious or reliable. Here are a few things I would have further expounded on if the video wasn't already so long. No regular adverbs exist in the language right now, but they're derived with a rubbing obsidian suffix. I haven't created row of numerals or words for numbers yet. But big numbers are easier to write than small ones in reference to how long geological timescales are compared to our experience. I would have liked to dive deeper into the lore around the silicate rights movement, the similarities between cats and rocks, the logistics of using character stones to send messages, the way rocks can have elemental advantages in battle, and much more. Instanation relates to how your choice of stones reflects on the context of the conversation. All the stones are key for this, but alternative vocabulary can also be used. Instanation can get very complex and often turns into a psychological battle for dominance. And lastly, I would have liked to produce a translation that follows the custom of only carrying six stones at a time, which, although no longer relevant, would have given the translation a more authentically cursed quality. So, here's one more thing I am adding. What's the point of this if you're not going to hear me make a bunch of weird noises, right? Luckily, there are situations where you can only communicate with sound. So after the invention of the radio and the telephone, Stoners had to figure out how to actually speak their language. Their answer was simple enough. I substituted the chromatic silica manual stop with the pulmonic stop, the chromatic silica manual trill with the pulmonic fricative, the chromatic silica manual flap with the pulmonic vibrant, and the chromatic silica manual fricative with the pulmonic approximant. Two items of note are the amethyst and the silica manual flap, which don't have a corresponding pulmonic vibrant that a human can pronounce. So they get extra short pulmonic fricatives instead. The non-chromatic stonemes are next. Presenting your obsidian will make the ah sound, because that's the sound you make when you're presented with something nice. Patting your obsidian will make the e sound, because that's the sound of a yelp and an unexpected touch. Rubbing your obsidian will make the ooh sound, because that's the sound you make when you get a relaxing massage. That only leaves squeezing your obsidian. For any self-respecting four vowel system, there is only one real candidate for inclusion here, so, of course, here's the vowel you've all been waiting for. If you've been paying attention, you know that rock fighting isn't a self-respecting language. So, of course, you've got to squeeze your throat the same way you squeeze your obsidian. Easy? <laughs> Who'd want to make pronouncing their language easy? In keeping with tradition, the negation marker gets the dental click, because that's the sound of the disapproving t -t 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 you make when some stupid rich kid smashes their stone on the ground for the fifth time. And lastly, we have the glottal stop. Rock fighting's full of stones are piled up in one spot, but following Roam, 
here they're kept apart for clarity. There are a few issues with the system. For starters, the total lack of stomach tactics makes it really difficult to pronounce most words, especially with obsidian occurring mainly at the ends of words to indicate their part of speech. This turns the onset of nearly every syllable into a mountain of a consonant cluster, with no rhyme or reason as to which parts are voiced and which aren't. The horrible set of pay names chosen here only make the problem worse. Voiceless approximants are hard to distinguish since they don't create turbulent airflow, and voiceless vibrants are just weird. And then there are pairs that sound extremely alike, like the voiceless uvular fricative and voiceless uvular trill, or the voiceless alveolar flap and the voiceless retroflex flap. This means that your articulation has to be pretty precise not to be misunderstood. Compounding on that problem are idiolects. This is pretty much just a spoken version of Roam, including obsidian being special for some reason, so all the weirdness that comes from polyp stones just carries over. With the stones themselves, it's kind of manageable, but for speech, it's horrible. Making it worse again is the glottal stop, since it's easy to make accidentally, and its presence or absence dictates which names are combinations of multiple sounds, including combinations like z, which turns into oo. Compared to all of that, the inclusion of a random click for a specific morpheme is honestly kind of adorable. To be honest, it's probably the least problematic sound here, aside from a, uh, e, u, and now it's finally time for the challenge. As I mentioned before, I won't be restricting myself to just six stones here, so I won't be using any gift stones or variations in choice of strip stones for this translation. First in English. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. And here is the complete stonunciation in rock fighting. And next, written Roam. I'll also show the linguistic gloss. And a fairly literal translation back into English to help show the structure of the language. All known rules of flight are agreed. The bee should not fly. Its wings are too small to be able to fly its fat little body. Yet the bee flies, stone is solid. Because what humans think an impossibility, bees don't care. And at last, it's time for the day. And that's it for the rock fighting language. I could maybe have made it more cursed, but I had to kind of rush the creation process. So I decided I'd be better off keeping it a little more focused. That and I wanted to put some effort into sitting close to the theme. Anyway, I hope I won't be stoned for my awful entry. I doubt I've rocked anyone's socks off, so I see a rocky road ahead with steep competition. But perhaps by tossing that pebble into the con landing pond, the ripples will reach someone and make their day just a little bit more solid. And really, that's the main objective here. <laughs>